again, this is uh, Andy Breitman. Uh, we're ready to go with another technique now. The area is pretty well prepared. I put on a big spatula knife here, just some oil paint. There's no wax in here at all. There's no medium in here. It's just oil paint. And I'm going to take it across this surface, just so I have a nice dark place to move. And then I'm going to make sure it's wiped off. Throw that away. And then I'm going to reheat that surface. And I want you to see how I can manipulate the top of that wax. I mean, the top of the, using the wax, I can manipulate the oil paint that's on top. And I can do this with any set of colors I like. We'll go back to the heat gun. See if it works. Okay, I'm gonna heat the surface up. There you can see it start to emulsify right away. It starts to get liquid. Now I'm gonna try to get it liquid below the paint. So the paint itself isn't gonna move because there's no wax in it. But the surface underneath the paint is now fluid. So there, see how it can, ah, there what I'm looking for. So now I can start to move this like a tectonic plate. Now it's already cooled off. But I can move the wet oil paint as the surface underneath it gets wet. I can move those solid areas of cool of oil paint around and get them to move because the molten surface underneath them is fluid and it dries so quickly there are other elements involved too I can reveal cut through that and reveal some of the paint and rip and tear it and pull it well as long as I can move while it's still wet and you see how you can get drag a section a whole section across I can move that little seahorse I can cut across I can lift an area up and put it back on top and start to cut and reveal areas that are just so cool. So I can take a section here, lift it up right off that surface, turn it upside down or leave it right where it is so it fits right in with the color that I'm playing with. And I can just set it back down right on that wax. Now this time, I'd, I want to fuse these together, but I don't want to re-emulsify and get everything wet again. So I can, if I want to leave this just the way it is, I like that look. I may want to come back on top of some of that lighter green. So I'm going to heat my tool up again. Let me wipe this off. I'm going to heat my tool up. And I'm able to work this thickly with this material be because I'm on a rigid surface. There's no way I'll be able to work this thickly on a pliable surface. So I'm letting the surface dictate how thickly I'm working. You saw me pull my hand away really quickly. This is getting hot. There we go. Put this back in there. Okay, I'm just going to let this sit around a second while that melts. But while that's melting, I'm going to fuse these areas together. I want you to see the difference. In this case, I'm using a lower heat farther away. And I watch this lay down. I just want to fuse it together. Look at that move and melt. Let that sit and melt. Fuse that. I'm re-emulsifying the wax. So that'll stay as rigid as I want it to. That's just beautiful right there. That looks just like a surface I'm trying to get. I'll pull that back aside. Now in this case, I'm going to take some more liquid and my large brush. Well, maybe I'll use a smaller brush. Take some of that lighter liquid and come, up, come on top. So now, I want to let this look like a little bit of something underneath that. And like anything else, it's the darks that let my mid-tones sparkle. So as I get these, this mid-tone, this, this light green of, on top of that dark blue, it's very attractive. I put that same light green against the lighter blue, it doesn't have anywhere near the sparkle it does. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking to lay in areas that will allow for more sparkle as I go, and that usually means I need more dark. 
So I'm going to come back to my dark pile. And whether it's in wax or in oil, spread that across. And then I'm going to move it a little bit. That's that Egyptian violet, I think, mixed with that black. Ooh. Now let's see what happens. So you can see the surface I've got here is very uh, gooky with um, wax and paint. And that's mostly the oil paint that's stuck to that surface. So I'm going to pull that off and throw my rag away. And all that's going in the outside trash when I'm done today. It's not going to stay in the house or in the studio. I'll come back and get my heat gun and I'll start to heat this surface up again. And now I'm looking very specifically at area by area. Now look how pretty that's looking right in there. So I'm going to let that sit. Those colors are beginning to sparkle. This looks pretty muddy to me, so I'll clear this up a little bit. And I may use a big spatula to lift some of that away. Ooh, that's pretty. That looks very liquid there. I'm liking that a lot. That looks beautiful. This area here still looks a little muddy to me, so I'm going to let that sit and cool. Turn off the thermostat, turn off the heat. Let that set, start to set up. And at the same time it's setting up, I'm going to, this is all good usable wax. So I'm going to scrape that off. Put that back into one of these tins, not burning myself. And if I had a good French accent, I could be like Julia Child here. I wish I had a painting I could pull out of the oven that was finished. I actually do. I have some over here. We can see the finished product as we begin to play around. Now I'm going to look over the surface again and see where the paint looks effective, like this is nice and clean, this looks clean and manipulated. This is an interesting little raised area. Uh, um, I'm not sure that I like that. I think I like this a lot. I may just see what happens if I scrape off some of that, see what's underneath, and go, oh, that's pretty. Now I have the option. I can turn it over and manually push it in to fill that raised surface, because it, even though it's not um, really soft, it's pliable. So I like, and I'm trying to get the effect of water, so that's going to look really nice. This nice big thick surface here. Some people like that cloudy look, and I may find it's very effective. I may just want to move it over. So I'm beginning to start to build a surface now, and this I'm going to smooth out. As soon as I re-emulsify that or put some surface on top of that, it'll look very differently. So I'm just sort of, it's sort of like cleaning the slate. I'm just starting over on this area. I really like the way that blue is sparkling. This is looking good. This is very attractive, but the surface is bothering me. So I'm going to scrape this off a little bit and just see what's underneath. And maybe I can stick that right into this area. I'll look around. That's looking attractive. There's a big build up here. And I haven't really worked on this area at all yet. But I wanted you to see some of the possibilities that we've got. And there's one more possibility that we're going to come into right now. And I wanted you to see that before we move to the next step. And so I'm going to transition this light color into this darker blue by lifting up some of these prettier paints down here and using them as a transitional color. So I turned that upside down just to see what was happening there. So I'm not real pleased with this. Let's play with, let's move that. Oh, that looks better. Okay, I'll take the gun again. I'll give it a, another little shot. This gun is blowing too much, so let me try this gun. And this is a gun with a little less uh, pressure, a little less uh, air. Sorry. Okay. 
Okay, so now this is a more controlled surface and I'm gonna heat this up and I'm looking at the edges to let this fuse. And as long as each of those areas I've cut off has been thoroughly heated and joined or fused with the surface underneath it, it'll dry and be part of the finished painting. Nothing will move. So I'm just going around the perimeter, fusing that area. This area here looks so pretty when it was wet. I want to make sure it's got that, it retains that look. Okay, so now all of those things that I cut off and moved are now, well, this one isn't, are fairly well fused into that wet surface. I'm going to take something else now. I'm going to turn this off. And uh, we're going to take a break for a second while I find this next material.